The most commonly used way to measure poverty is based on incomes. A person is considered poor if his or her income level falls below some minimum level necessary to meet basic needs. This minimum level is usually called the poverty line. What is necessary to satisfy basic needs varies across times and societies. Mental poverty is simply an impoverished mind. It's a refusal to change and trying better ways of thinking, do what takes, or putting your thoughts into action. Due to this mental poverty, many are killed and many are criticized. The way we do the research is to use Google Form. The reason why we use it is that it's convenient and we can get first-hand information. The following is how we design our Google Form. First, we ask the respondents whether they think they are physically poor or spiritually poor. They may answer they belong to the physically poor, the spiritually poor, neither of the above or both of the above. Second, we want to know why they think so and ask them to give reasons. Next, we ask what impacts that poverty has on them. In total, we received 21 responses. The percentage of neither of the above is the highest. The second highest is spiritual poverty. The percentages of physical poverty and both of the above are equal. In the chart, we can see that the main reason for spiritual poverty is that people treat things with a negative perspective. Besides, a respondent thinks the reason is a lack of social interaction. Most of the people who are physically poor think they have higher demands for material things. To people who are both spiritually and physically poor, low income is the primary cause. And to those who are neither of the above, it seems that they feel satisfied with their lives. For those who think they are poor, they may feel anxious, upset, concerned, and so on. Next, we will explain the effects of both kinds of poverty and solutions to them in detail. The effects of poverty, lack of confidence. The poor often unconsciously compare themselves with someone who is richer and feel extremely sad with their conditions. Because of the gap, they get more and more self-abased gradually. Feeling insecure. People who are born into poor families lack resources, so it is hard for them to get enough knowledge and inspiration. This makes them fear to dream big. They only care about the immediate things but ignore the long-term benefits. As a result, when they make choices, they don't select something that is unstable but promising to do, because they only pay attention to the immediate benefits and don't invest in themselves. They are afraid of lose. Unstable emotion. The poor usually can get something that they desire or do whatever they would like to do, because they don't have enough money. Their desire and demand cannot be satisfied, so they feel frustrated and angry about their condition. In the meantime, they are anxious due to the hard situation of finance. Malnutrition Because of poverty, the poor really care about the expenses of money. They tend to choose the least expensive food to fill up their belly, but these low-priced foods do not offer enough and balanced nutrients to them. It might lead to malnutrition if they consume these foods every day. 4. How to solve the problem that poverty brings to people If you feel depressed or can't stay motivated, there are some tips that can help you. First, exercising. Second, find a goal. Third, go traveling. Go exercising. Reduce the pressure and anxiety. Regular exercise can increase the serotonin and endorphin levels. That can increase the sense of joy to reduce the pressure and anxiety. And when you are exercising, you are focused on your breath. That can help you to forget the thing bother you. Increase self-confidence. Their researchers show that if you have regular exercise more than six months, that can help you building confidence. Find a goal. 
If you don't know how to set a goal, you can start by setting short-term goals, such as finishing one several course within a week, reading a book every month, and going to bed 30 minutes earlier every day. After you achieve short-term goals, you can set some long-term goals, like learning a third language, improving communication and presentation skills, and winning a scholarship. Go traveling. If you're still in a bad mood, you should go traveling. A travel experience instantly makes you happier by getting you away from your daily green quickly.